Hey guys, it's Kelly from fitnessblender.com and today I have a brutal butt and thigh workout for you. The only thing you're gonna need for this workout is a set of dumbbells and even if you don't have those, you can still get in a great workout. I haven't included your warm up, so you're gonna wanna make sure you do one of those on your own. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the way this is going to work is we have three exercises per group and we're going to be going through each group twice through. So we're gonna be doing 45 seconds on with 20 seconds rest between each one of these and we're starting off with deadlifts. So I'm going to be lifting 24 per hand. The amount that you're going to be lifting is completely specific to your own strengths and weaknesses. So keep a nice flat back and then come down. Keep that back flat. If you want to pick a place on the wall to look up ahead so you make sure you're not rounding your shoulders. Inhale as you sink down, then exhale as you press back up. Just squeeze those glutes so you really feel it as you're pulling back up. Keep a slight bend in those knees. Over halfway down already. So by the end of these timed intervals, you should really be feeling it. If you're not, you first want to check your form and then you want to add more weight on. Five seconds. All right. Next up, we have a curtsy lunge squat. So I'm gonna go pretty light for this one because it's relatively tough to go for eight pounds this time per hand. So this is a combination of strength training. There's a little bit of um, kind of high intensity sort of exercises like jump squats and all kinds of things like this. So step back, back behind yourself, come to the center and step back behind yourself again. So you're staying low the whole time if you can. Otherwise, you can come up in the center each time, do that curtsy lunge, come up to the front, do your squat, come up. So just break it apart if you need to. If your muscles are getting too tired, or your form starts to suffer, just break it into simpler parts. We've got 15 seconds left. Pull in your core. Try to squeeze all of your muscles. Two, one. All right, next up we have a gliding jump squat. So this one's kind of different and we're gonna be working all kinds of different angles here, plus a little explosive motion at the end. So even during our rest periods, we're always moving. So at least a boxer shuffle, at least more marching in place, if I can talk. All right, so we're gonna do that gliding jump squat. So sink down into your squat. You're gonna glide right, then glide left, then come to the center and jump. Next time you're gonna come down, glide left, and glide right, center, and jump. So, you don't have to use any weight at all if you don't want to and you're still gonna feel it in this one. In fact, I'm gonna dump mine right now. Otherwise, keep gliding, make sure you're choosing a different side to lean to each time to initiate that movement. Jump up as hard as you can, land as soft as you can. Just five seconds left. All right, so 20 seconds rest, keep your feet moving, take some nice deep breaths here. Grab a really quick drink of water if you want to. Save the heavy drinking until the end. I think I'm gonna bump up my weight, I'm gonna do 28 pounds per hand this time. All right, here we go. Keep those weights nice and close to your legs. Squeeze those glutes. Over halfway done. Five seconds left. All right, so back to that curtsy lunge squat. Again, like I said, you can do this one without any weight at all and you're still gonna feel it. I'll do an extra 16 pounds. All right, five seconds. You're welcome to start early. All right, here we go. Stand on that squat. 
back and behind in the center and then other side so you still want to make sure you're keeping your back nice and flat still want to make sure you're keeping the majority of your weight in your heels so you don't want to be rocking forward and try not to hold your breath this is an easy one the harder it gets the more inclined you are to start to hold your breath which doesn't make a lot of sense but unless you want to wake up on your floor don't hold your breath five seconds left ouch okay we have one more to go so we're done with our first group this routine just feels like it's going by really quick hopefully it stays that way just take a nice Deep breath. I'm going to start into that gliding jump squat again. So sink down, go to one side, then the other, then jump up as hard as you can in the center. So you're isolating that work on one leg and then the other. And you should feel it. This leg should complain a little. Some Fifteen seconds. Try to be nice and smooth, no jerking. And if you start to get tired, first of all, you can cut out the jumps completely. You can also make your uh, squat less shallow or less deep. It will hurt less. <laughs> all right. Next up, we have squats. So I'm going to use uh, sixteen pounds to hand. And I like to hold my weights up at my shoulders, but you can hold them down by your sides as well. Otherwise, feet about shoulder width apart. Three seconds. So drop down, squeeze as you press back up. So your feet are about shoulder width apart. You're keeping your back flat the whole time and the majority of your weight is in your heels. So much so that you could actually take your feet, your toes up off the ground and wiggle them if you wanted to. So only go down as far as you can control. So you don't want your knees buckling inward or outward. You want them to stay right in track in line with your toes. If they're buckling inward or outward, you're probably lifting too much for your strength at that point. 10 seconds left. All right, next up we have reverse lunge with pulses. So I'm going to go nice and light for this one, relatively light, it's still going to be hard for me, that's the important thing. So 8 pounds per hand this time, we're going to be doing a reverse lunge plus pulses. So you're going to step behind yourself, come back up, one, two, three, and then switch. So drop down between those two feet, come back in, keep your core tight, and do three pulses upwards. Don't throw your leg. You want to make sure that you're in control of that motion so it's all smooth and 100% you're doing, no momentum. Really focus on, if you can, balancing yourself because it takes a lot of work from your core to be able to hold yourself upright like that. Almost done, keep it going. All right, now for our last interval in this group is a static jumping lunge. So I hope you guys will talk to me after this. It might be kind of intense. So we're gonna be going into uh, a lunge and then holding it and just jumping. So come down as if you were gonna do a jumping lunge and you're just going straight up. So you're staying on one side. So you're keeping everything in alignment good form, you're jumping as hard as you can, and then also focusing on landing as soft as you can. So if you wanna make this low impact, just stay right here. And if you start to get really tired, you can come here. If you need a break, or over halfway done, try to keep it jumping as long as you can. Ten seconds. Sneak in a couple reps there. 
easier version, and then go back to the harder version as soon as you can. All right, so remember which leg you had for the last time. So we're going back to that squat. So grab your weights, use uh, 24 pounds. Two, one, here we go. Inhale on the way down, exhale as you press back up. Over halfway. Ten seconds. Oh. All right, back to that jumping lunge. Let's, or sorry, reverse lunge. My bad. I'm gonna go a little heavier this time, actually. So, twelve pounds per hand for this. So we're gonna be doing a reverse lunge, alternating reverse lunge plus this pulses. Here we go. Down, come back up. One, two, and three. Like I said, do your best to balance. You can always hold on to a chair or a couch or a counter, but do your best to use those abs, use those back muscles, and keep yourself upright on your own for as long as you can. Especially if your balance is not that great yet, you can do these um, next to a wall without weights. If your balance is good, if your balance is not good, you do not want to add weights. Make sure it's really important to take the time to build those, you know, that platform that you can jump from. All right, because shortcuts, they always end up hurting you in the long run. All right, so static jump and jumping lunge. 45 more seconds of work and we'll get a quick break. And then we'll be halfway done already, actually. We're cruising, here we go. Oops, yeah, remember which foot you had first. So I'm doing the left foot forward this time. You can always hold on to weights here too. Do what you need to to challenge yourself. Remember your lower impact option, the easier version. 15 seconds left. If you can, even do a regular no jump and then jump. So alternate. Oh. Oh, five seconds. Just don't quit moving, whatever you do. Oh, okay. There we go. So here's our water break. Grab a quick drink. We'll be right back. All right, now we are going to finish up with our second half and we're starting off with side lunges. So I'm going to be using uh, 12 pounds per hand for this one. So get your weights up there and you're be going from side to side, keeping one leg straight and bending over or leaning towards the knee that is bent. So again, just like with all of our squats and our deadlifts, you're going to keep your back flat. Over halfway. Ten seconds. Keep it going. I'm gonna drop those weights in just a second. All right. So next up, we have a calf raise plus a jump squat plus a side leg raise. So this one's really testing our coordination and our balance, which is really good for not only our butt and thighs, but also our core again. All of these uh, exercises call really heavily upon your core. So here we go. We're going up 
into a calf raise, then come down for a narrow stance jump squat, then come up and lift. So again, calf raise, jump squat, come to the center and lift. So by nature, this is gonna throw off your balance because you're all over the board, but that's part of the challenge. So don't feel bad, just do your best to control it. Use uh, conviction in your moves. Try to focus and control that range of motion. So here we're working the outer thigh. Here we're doing our calves and this narrow stance uh, jump squat is really targeting our inner thighs as well. Out to the side, try not to throw that leg. All right, next up we have squat steps. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use 12 pounds per hand for this one. So this is really simple and it's probably really gonna, um, we're gonna feel it. So we're gonna be going down into a squat and then stepping forward with each foot and then back with each foot. So go into your squat, once you're here, going forward, forward, back, back. Now whichever leg you started with last time is gonna be next or last this time. So alternate, which leg is stepping forward? Back, back, switch legs. All right, I'm gonna drop my weights, which is totally fine. I'd rather see you do it with no weights at all than with weight and poor form. So we're kind of waddling forward and back, but we're staying as low as we can the whole time. Keep it going, almost done. All right, we'll deserve a break real quick like, and then we're gonna do side lunges. So, that's probably my sister. <laughs> Hi, Krista. All right. Okay, so we're going back to the side lunge. Here we go. Nice deep breath. Start it up. So like I said, the amount of weight you're going to be lifting is going to be completely dependent on your own strength. So just make sure that you are breathing hard and you can feel your muscles by the end of that interval. If it feels easy, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> About 15 seconds left. Five seconds. Three, two, one. All right, now we're going back to that combo move. So this is one with the calf raise plus the jump squat plus the side leg raise. So keep your feet moving. Shake out those legs where you can. Swing around your arms if you want to. Take some deep breaths. Remember, you can hold on to weights during these two. So calf raise, jump squat up as hard as you can. Side leg raise, calf raise, jump squat. Side leg raise. If you make yourself feel uncoordinated during your workouts, you're gonna be, uh, you're gonna feel more coordinated in your everyday life. And when you go try something new, it's the kind of stuff that makes you feel like an athlete. You can do all kinds of weird stuff. You don't spend hours on the treadmill. <laughs> Your range of motion and your balance and your coordination is way better. One. All right, so back to the squat steps. And I'm gonna use weight this time, but just a little bit. So barely anything, just four pounds per hand. Doing what I can. And that changes day to day, honestly. There's some days where you're gonna feel stronger than others, and other days where you just feel weaker. So listen to your body, stay tuned in. Back, back, up, up, back, back. Pull in your core. Just stay low while you waddle. 15 seconds left. Ooh. 
Okay, just one more group left. So we're gonna be doing lunges this time. <clears throat> I think we'll do a forward lunge since we did a reverse lunge on that last set of lunges. Just to mix it up, keep our body guessing. I've got 12 pounds per hand for this. So here we go. Staying up nice and tall. Try to drop down right in between those two feet. You can always tell when a lower body workout has been like pretty tough when you get to an exercise where you're like, oh yeah, I can lift that no problem. And then you start into it and you're like, whoa, the weight feels like double the weight than it normally does. <laughs> and that's when it's okay to adjust your weights too. <laughs> 15 seconds left. Three, two, one. All right. So next up we have a lunge plus a jump, a jump squat. So another combo move here. <clears throat> you know I like to sneak in jump squats whenever I can. <laughs> but you can always cut out the jumps and make it low impact too. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So we're starting off jump squat, come directly back, go into that lunge. Stay low if you wanna make it harder. Otherwise, you can come up in between your repetition. Otherwise, stay low. Aside from that jump squat, if your legs have anything left, do what you can. Give it what you've got. Fifteen seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. This is another interval where you might not want to talk to me tomorrow, but next up we're doing pull squats. So this is a burnout round. It's the name of this third exercise in each group. So don't feel bad if you need to take a break. Just do the very best you can. <clears throat> Here we go. So sink into that squat and we're just holding it. So remember to keep your back flat, do as best. Even if you're right here, you can still feel it. So shaft all that work. So do what you can, get as low as you can, and just pulse here, just barely moving, keeping everything nice and tight. <clears throat> I think sometimes it helps to set miniature goals, like I will make it for the next 10 seconds. And then if you make it, maybe you get a few more seconds out of yourself. Oh. 10 seconds left, keep going if you can. Five seconds. Two, one. Okay, now we have to do that round one more time. I'm really sorry. <laughs> We're gonna feel awesome in a minute when this is over with. So, you go back to those lunges. <clears throat> Got uh, eight pounds per hand for now. See how this goes, three seconds. All right, here we go. Pull in your core. It's hard when you're really tired and you're really exerting yourself. That's all the more reason to do it. It'll protect your back and it'll help train your muscles. So pull in those abs, tighten your core. <sighs> 10 seconds left. <sighs> Five, three, two, one. Okay, all right, last two groups. We have a lunge plus a jump squat. 10 seconds left. Catch your breath. Here we go, three seconds. Okay, jump squat. Come down directly behind yourself. Go back into that jump squat. got any explosive power left in you. Now's the time to use it up. On the other hand, if you're slowing down, 
do that lunge, come here, come to the center, do your squat, come to the center. So just break it down however you need to. Five seconds left. Okay. One more to go. One more round of pull squats. Add weights if you need to, if you want to make it harder. Otherwise, find your breath. Go to your happy place. Here we go. Just sink down and just hold it. Try to take some nice deep breaths. Try first, try tapping into your happy place. And if you need a break, stand up really quick, shake out your legs and come right back down. There's kind of this like sort of cheat that you can do that's not that bad of a cheat. If you're walking back and forth between your feet because you're giving one leg a break but the other one's doing all the work so it's not really a real cheat. So this cheat is Kelly approved. <laughs> if you wanna rock back and forth a little. Otherwise, staying right here. Keep going if you can. We have 10 seconds left. Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. <sighs> okay, that's it. All the hard work is done. Now all we have left is our cool down and stretch. All right, guys, we're gonna slowly bring our heart rates back down. So start just moving around a little bit. Move your arms around a little, kick your legs around a little. Wherever you're feeling tight, kind of start working through that range of motion. Nice deep breaths. Rock back and forth a little. Shake out all those muscles that we just worked over big time. So I want to know if you guys are sore tomorrow. I want to hear about it. So you have to come back and tell me if you're sore. I think I will definitely be sore. All right, so let's go ahead and do some toe touch sweeps. So you're going to start on one side. Work down to the other, nice and slow. Just kind of enjoy the way it feels all the way around. Come back up. Do a little bit of a torso stretch in here. Slowly come back down. So you should feel this through the backs of your thighs as well as through your lower back a little bit. Do one more round in each direction. <clears throat> oh yeah, I can feel my, my legs are shaky. <laughs> All right, back to the other side, and then we're going to stretch out the front of our thighs. So you might need something to hold on to after this routine. If you need a little support from a wall, go for it. Otherwise, you can use your balance. <clears throat> Pull that foot up towards your butt so you feel a good stretch through your quads here, the front of your thigh. So you don't want to drink a lot of water after this. And if you've sweated as much as I have, we have lots of water we need to replace. So you're going to want to make sure you do that. You're also going to want to uh, eat as soon as you can after this. So at least a hefty snack. If you can't have a meal right now, make sure you at least have a few hundred calories worth of snack. You want to replenish your energy stores and your carbohydrates. Should be starting to feel your breath return to normal. <clears throat> Alright, now we're going to step forward with one very shaky leg apparently. <laughs> so we're going to step forward and then lean back a little so you feel a nice stretch through here, through your, the front of your thigh and your hip flexor. You can lean back even more if you want to feel it more. Go ahead and switch sides so you can step forward. Just switch leg positions. Press the, those hips forward to get that stretch in there. Take some nice deep breaths. This is the part that makes the whole thing worth it where you're just like, I did it, it's over. <laughs> Can't wait to do it again. Hopefully, maybe that feeling will come later, but hopefully at least don't hate it. That good feeling afterwards almost makes up for all the torture. All right, so now we're going to step wide, and this time we're stretching the inside of our thigh. So you can bend this leg and keep this one straight. You can even lean into it more if you want to feel it more. <clears throat> and 
gonna switch sides. All right, now keeping the stance nice and wide, we're gonna come down forward. You can even clasp your hands behind your back and get a good upper body stretch in here if you want to. It helps you lean into the lower body stretch a little more. Kind of move around and find any places where you're tight. You can bend back and forth from knee to knee. All right, so. Now we're gonna drop down into a downward dog. So walk yourself out nice and slow, stretch the backs of those thighs. And then once we're here, I'm gonna put down just one foot. So in kind of a downward dog, you're gonna be stretching just this one calf. So bring this other foot, you can hook it around that other leg if you like, just don't want it rest on the ground so you can isolate that one calf. All right, now the other. All right, now you're gonna step one foot forward and then lean over it as much as you can. So you should feel a nice stretch through the back of the thigh that you're uh, folded over, as well as through this hip flexor a little. And slowly walk up so you get a little bit of a core stretch as well. Just deepen that hip flexor stretch too. <clears throat> Over here, it's a little bit of a torso twist. Just in this direction, then lean away from yourself. One more time in each direction. And away. All right, now we're gonna switch sides. Fold that opposite leg over. I'm going to lean forward, hold it here for just a few seconds. And now we're going to lean back. I know you look back on that leg, twist as much as you can through this core. Now, the other direction, you might hear some pops as long as it doesn't hurt. There's nothing to worry about. And back the other way. And one more time the opposite direction. All right, we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna do a deep glue stretch. You're just gonna hold this. Bring your leg up, grab behind that leg, behind the thigh, until you feel a nice stretch through the back of this thigh that's folded over. This one should feel really good after all the uh, exercises we just did. All right, go ahead and switch sides. and let it relax. All right, guys, that was a tough one, but if you've made it this far, you should be proud. So, like I said, if you're sore tomorrow, come back and tell me. Otherwise, good job, guys. This workout is complete.